I am not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. Do your own research. Consult a professional investment advisor before making any investment decisions. This show is for entertainment only. Faites vos propres recherches. Here we are. In another episode. Of the Simple Success Podcast. And this is Financial Life Coaching from a Happiness Perspective. My score so low, I'm in despair, for I have ruined it beyond all repair. Blunders mine will haunt for years, and now my future looks filled with fears. Your score is down, while your debt abounds, but you can make it worse around. Just keep on spending and never pay back, and your score will be off track. Ignore all bills and let them pile. Forget about payments and let them die. And stop checking your credit report too and you'll find that it's not so hard to do. Don't pay your debts. Let them go to collections. This will make sure that your credit score's direction is headed straight down to the depths of despair. And this you will never be able to repair. If you want to ruin your credit score fast, just follow these steps. And it won't last. But be warned, it's far to get back. So make sure you step not on that crack. I suppose you're going to list a bunch of ways to ruin your credit now, huh? Well, unfortunately, yes, because this isn't about alternative investments. Remember that article I wrote that I told you about? Yes, of course. That's one of the many things we send to new subscribers and supporters of what we do here. That's very cool. Thank you. This can have a major impact, so it's the least I can do for people. Your credit rating is a valuable asset that can be easily damaged. Yeah, if you're not careful. And here are some of the most common ways to ruin your credit and upset your investment strategy and investment portfolio even more then, with an overly concentrated stock position. Goals. Yeah. Are these ways you're going to tell us from the list that you keep? Partly, yeah. But this is a great companion summary. Okay, nice. What's the first one? The first one is missed payments. Missing payments on your credit cards or other loans and upping your credit card debt is one of the quickest and easiest ways to damage your credit score. True. If you miss a bunch of payments, au contraire, my dear son of DT's dad, even one missed payment can have a significant impact on your score. Wow, okay. How about maxing those babies out? Using too much of your available credit can also have a negative impact on your credit score. Keep your balances low and pay off as much as you can each month. Note to self, ask about something called utilization rate. (laughs) Why do you want to know about that? I'm planning ahead for a change. Lenders want to know how likely you are to use all the credit they give you. Yeah, it's kind of a game. If you use everything they give you, they stop giving it. Oh yeah, that's opposite of the federal office employee game, right? You mean the one where if you don't use everything, they stop giving it? Yeah, that one. Moving on. What's another one? Too many credit card applications. Huh? Yeah. Every time you apply for a new credit card, it triggers what's called a hard inquiry on your credit report. Too many of these credit inquiries can lower your score. So don't do it without a specific purpose. Right. And don't do it without knowing the risks involved. To your own research, right? Right. What about closing accounts you have but no longer need? You are way better off keeping them open just in case, but mentally preparing yourself to pretend they're not there and not using them. Oh, oh, of course. That would be unused credit. Which goes right to your utilization rate in a really great way. What else you got for us? Opening a credit account when you're not ready to meet the obligations, like having a steady job or letting someone else use your credit while you co-sign is another one. But that one can work out very well, though. It can, but it's not without any concerns. Payment history is a big deal, DT. And there's also not checking your credit report. That should be every year, right? Right. And for all three major agencies, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. Well, that's just the same info, isn't it? Often it is, but not always. So look at them every year to be sure there are no errors and nothing that looks like fraudulent activity. Okay, that's enough. Hey, wait, those aren't examples, are they? Well, they are all examples of ways to ruin your credit. But we're all about doing that's good kind of thing. That's good. So titling this episode, How to Ruin Your Credit, is sort of a joke then. Yes, it is. The goal of this episode, and goals are good, thank you, yes, is educating people on the things that can hurt their credit score and how to avoid them. You mean the goal isn't to relax like usual? (laughs) Why do you say that? Because you still haven't mentioned. Break number one. 
Hello, everyone. This is John with the Simple Success Podcast, financial life coaching from a happiness perspective. Because we know you want to show us some serious love in return for the tremendous benefits you get from us, please subscribe to us in your favorite podcast player. You can find us on both the App Store and the Play Store because our message is for everyone. Leave a rating for us, or even better, tell a friend. Whichever you choose, thank you so much for helping us do this for you. To leave us a written message, which just might lead to more in a future podcast, go to those same written show notes to find our subreddits. There is also our Facebook group page, Twitter, and other ways which we'll tell you about from time to time. You can also find an Easter egg every so often, so listen closely. Thank you again, and keep those constructive ideas coming. We need to ruin our credit. What should we do? Well, we could ignore all credit risks and a diversified portfolio and just buy a bunch of junk bonds. Or not. Or not. Or we could start by maxing out our credit cards and not paying them off. Oh, that's a great idea. We can also take out loans that we won't be able to pay back. And let's forget about making payments on those existing loans and credit cards. And let's make sure to never check our credit score. That way, we won't know how bad things are getting. Brilliant. We'll be sure to ruin our credit in no time. Prithee, if thou lovest me, tell me how to ruin my credit not. I love thee not, DT. Wow. Shakespeare. Why, then I care not for thee either, nor my credit, nor my cash flow. And the unfortunate truth is that it's not hard to ruin your credit and have to dip prematurely into your emergency fund or or retirement savings. Just a couple of silly little mistakes. Yep, all it takes is a few missteps and you can find yourself in a financial hole. One that will take years to climb out of. Well, yeah, it can not take a while. The consequences of bad credit can be severe and long-lasting. Like how? Like like that low credit score. Yeah, okay, that doesn't sound good. But what really happens along with that? For a lot of people, it becomes difficult to get approved for a loan or a line of credit. But they could be. Goals. Yes, they could, but the interest rate will likely be much higher than it would be for someone with a good credit score. Well, they made that bed. True, but something like this can make it difficult to purchase a car or home or even get approved for an apartment lease. Ignoring credit limits can also lead to higher insurance premiums and even difficulty getting a job. So it isn't a good deal, even for the people nearby. No, it isn't. Describe the steps one should take to ruin their credit. That's funny. It is, sort of, but this isn't so much. What isn't? The steps to take, or preferably not take. Again, one big step in ruining your credit is to stop making payments on existing debts and bank loans. That'll cause a quick drop, won't it? I mean, to hell with credit quality. A drop in the credit score? Yes, it will. This will cause your credit score to drop quickly and make it difficult for you to get approved for any type of loan or line of credit. So much for high potential returns if that happens. That's really cool. I would like to be more adept at ruining my credit. What's another little known trick to do that? Okay, here's another thing to avoid. Open up multiple lines of credit with no intention of paying them back. Make having bad financial goals a big part of your long-term goals or your investing goals. Oh, I like that. Well, you shouldn't like it, so I'm sorry to hear that. But here's even more. Maxing out existing lines of credit can also have that negative effect on your credit score and change your risk tolerance over a relatively short period of time. But I want to live la vida loca. Different show, DT. Different show, DT. Okay, you keep talking while I go write some bad checks and generally mess up my financial health and my investment goals. You know, I've been meaning to tell you that writing bad checks or taking out loans in someone else's name can also have a devastating effect on your credit score. Oh, hmm, I guess I won't do that then. Good choice, DT. That's good. Don't you think that people who keep real close track of credit scores are losers? No, in fact, quite the opposite. People who keep track of their credit scores are smart and responsible individuals. Who maybe also understand the importance of maintaining a good credit score. Yes, keeping track of your score can help you identify any potential problems early on so that you can take steps to address them before they become more serious. And you're now going to tell us why investors care about this. Goals. That's probably not a bad idea. Goals. 
Okay. Investors care about having good credit for a couple of reasons. Tell me just one. Okay, to start, the big one is that it is an entry requirement in some investing opportunities, along with the rate of return you could get. That will be affected. Maybe I do need more reasons than one. Which we give to our inner circle of friends. And which we can share to whomever we like, whenever we like. But first, break number two. We know a lot about you already because we know ourselves. For example, we know that you know how to listen to our podcast. We also know that you probably know how to subscribe. So as soon as you're done with that, tell us your story. We have ways you can contact us. It involves a special link where you can leave us a message. We may have an email address for you as well in the future, and we'll let you know if that happens. The reason for subscribing I thought you'd never ask. When you subscribe, you automatically download all future episodes of that podcast. It just happens in your player without you having to go search again. How cool is that? This means better rankings for the podcast, more attention from advertisers, and more money. And this means more and better stuff for you. So your motivation is simple and easy. Subscribe today, whatever app and from whatever place you like. And don't just try to subscribe. There is no try. There is only do. We're changing the way we look at things. And remember, that's good. Eso es bueno, Sybil. Also remember, this is financial life coaching from a happiness perspective. Coaching happiness. Our call to action is right in the show notes. Find it and you win too. Are we back? Okay. Hey, everyone. I wanted to finish up today with something really important. Everyone? Well, every one of our listeners, that is. Okay, what is it? We only have a limited time, remember, not an infinite time horizon. Okay. As you know, we recently learned that having a good credit score can be beneficial for investing in the future, not just for informational purposes. Yeah. And with a good credit score, you have access to lower interest rates and more investment opportunities. It's really a simple solution to improve our long-term financial security. Nice try. But I don't borrow to invest. Oh, why not? Because I don't like the idea of being in debt. And if I'm investing, I want to be able to do it without having to rely on someone else's money. Two things there. You wouldn't be relying. You'd be taking advantage. And the second thing is, did you say if you're investing? There's no if about it. It's a figure of speech, John. You know how that works. Well, I guess I do, since everything you say comes out of my imagination. (laughs) So I was saying? Yes, you were saying? Goals. Right. I was saying that having a good credit score is... Is important. Yes, it is. And you know it. It means investing without a lot of debt. Which can be good with some exceptions, including many investment credit cards. A possible oxymoron that we'll cover in a different show. So noted. Just strike a balance between what you can afford and what kind of returns you're expecting. So you might get a better loan rate with a good credit score? Yes, and more of those opportunities for investments. Which comes with maintaining a good credit. Score. That's the takeaway today. That's why? Yes, that's why. Why do you ask? Is it because the revenges we are bound to take upon your traitorous father are not fit for your beholding? Wow. Shakespeare. Um... Grat, it's probably something simpler than that. That's good. Actually, I was asking because I wanted to ensure that everyone understands the importance of having a good credit score when it comes to investing. I hope so, too. With more opportunities and better terms, you can make smarter decisions when it comes to investing. By the way, nice save there, John. Saving is a great way to be simple, DT. Yo, this makes for a nice way to end this week's show. By talking about great ideas like practice? Yes, like practice, which is widely misunderstood, mon ami. It is that, but it's also the way. Which is how you've all gotten good. Gracias por escuchar. Salut. A la prochaine. This podcast and our other podcast are productions of Little Red Hen Industries. The supporting cast who helps me bake the bread includes Techno King, John C. Brandy, Alter Ego, Doubting Thomas, Fact Checker, A Small Brown Beef Animal, Seriously, Tiny. Facts are important but are also easy. Social Manager, Abraham Lincoln, Media Expert, Augustus Caesar. Psychologist, William James, Sound Designer, Adobe's Creative Suite, Spanish Consultant, Cameron J.K. Brandy. French consultant, Leah, the do your own research lady, videographer, Eto Monkoshki, audio props, Les Paul, inspiration, many podcasts and other sources and of course Napoleon Hill. We also have websites and you can subscribe to both podcasts. You can even send us a video, audio or text message, but of course you'll have to head to the show notes. 
either on your phone or on the web to get the links and stuff. And all those clickable links are in the show notes. And before we forget, the artificial intelligence or AI voices that you hear in our work are offered up by Google, Amazon Polly, and OpenAI like we say in the show notes. They don't sponsor us yet, but we love what they do and we just love what AI can do when lovingly crafted. Finally, you can find us on Protmatch.com, Matchmaker.fm, Podbooker and Podcast Guests where we consider guests and consider guesting on other people's shows. And really finally, the music for our pods comes from Cute by Ben Sound and from Piano Background by Nick Simon Adams, as well as from AI MuseNet. The sound effect credits go to Jackson Academy Ashmore, Canusi G, Dr. Jekyll, Joe Payne, Everything Sounds, MK Play More Stories, ERH, Sand Emotions, Big Pickle 51, and Just Kidding. Yes, that's his or her name. All on freesound.org. Also, languages are the bomb. Paul.